It may look like a scene from old New York, but these buildings have had to make room for new neighbors. The face of the East Village, along with surrounding neighborhoods, have been rapidly changing for the past few years, with more people moving into the city and willing to pay higher rates. We see more developers wanting to build high-rise condos. Along 3rd Avenue, you can see the construction all the way down to East Houston Street. While increasing luxury housing is a plus for some, other residents oppose it. The meatpacking district has recently become a historic district, but this is only due to the efforts of the local community boards to get the New York State Landmark Committee to grant landmark status to the area. The meatpacking district was rapidly changing, you know, and I think um, it was, you know, once again, a very large campaign that we embarked on um, to get the area um, landmarked and also to maintain the manufacturing zoning. So Meat packers, restaurants, and the distinct architecture of the neighborhood were allowed to stay, although the entire area was not granted landmark status. Strictors, we didn't get the entire area that we had asked for, but we got a significant chunk of it. And I think you can, if you go there now, you can see a big difference between the area that was protected and the area that's not protected. The Greenwich Village Society for Historical Preservation led the movement for the meatpacking district to be preserved and now is campaigning for another neighborhood. The southern part of Greenwich Village lies just below Washington Square Park. It spans from 4th Street down to Watt Street and from LaGuardia Place far into the West Village. But it is not protected from development. Residents are trying to change this by proposing the area become a historic district. The quiet streets below NYU's main campus have a distinct character that results from its history of diversity among its inhabitants. The, the South Village today retains an extraordinary resource of 19th and early 20th century architecture. It's amazingly how intact this is. Most of the South Village you see today was shaped by the second wave of Italian immigrants during the late 19th century. But that is not the way the story begins. Well, the first inhabitants of the, what became the South Village were free blacks who were settled in the 17th century by the Dutch government as a sort of buffer so that if there was an attack from the north by either Indians or the British coming in from Connecticut, they would be the first ones and would bear the brunt of the attack and could warn the settlement farther south. Free blacks were able to own land until the 19th century. By then, the wealthy had began to expand further north into Manhattan. Development is one that moves north from lower Manhattan and in the early 19th century, the population was growing, affluent people were moving farther north, and uh, the landowners began to sell off their property. Uh, street grids were laid out in the 18th century, and by the early 19th century, row houses primarily were built in the area. And most of the early residents were middle and upper middle class people who were living in single family homes. And a surprisingly large number of these early row houses still survive. The late 19th century was a time of industrial development and urban change. There was also a surge of new European immigrants looking for a place to start a better life. This created a job market for immigrants and also a market for providing them with housing. As it always happens in New York, things changed. Uh, new neighborhoods began to develop farther north. Uh, beginning in the 1840s, huge numbers of immigrants began to arrive. Uh, in New York, mostly from Ireland and Germany, and the wealthy moved away. Uh, the row houses were converted into multiple dwellings, and then owners began to realize that if they tore down the old row house and built a custom-built tenement that could house 20 or more families on a small 25-foot wide lot, they could make even more money. Uh, in the first wave, there were a lot of Irish and German moving in. There was also a substantial community of free blacks uh, around Carmine and Cornelia Street and uh, around Minetta Lane. And then in the late 19th century, the area begins to become increasingly Italian until by the 
uh, 19 teens and 1920s, it's almost entirely Italian. Just people just hung out on the street. They, they talked with each other out on the street. They, they shopped in local markets or local push carts. People knew each other and created a community, uh, even if they weren't necessarily best friends. With cheap rent, a diverse culture, and tenement reforms, a new group of people began to move into the area. Bohemians and the artists became a, a center for Bohemian culture. And this goes way back to the 19th century when there were all kinds of Bohemian hangouts. But the most famous period of Bohemian uh, South Village was in the early 20th century when mostly young radical artists and writers uh, settled in the area. They established uh, bars and restaurants and because these Bohemians became quite well known, tourists followed. And so a whole kind of Bohemian tourist culture develops. And then with that, real estate developers start transforming houses uh, into artist lofts that would be rented not necessarily to artists, but to anyone who could afford the rent. So you'd be Bars, local markets, and coffee shops, traditionally held by Italian locals, we're now serving a new group of patrons. Jazz, bebop, folk music could all be heard at the local bars and music halls. Musicians like Bob Dylan called the area his home. Several social and political movements thrived there as well. Today's South Village retains its historic presence. When walking down the streets, you can see row houses, and the new law tenements, and the old law tenements, and federal style buildings that have all survived right beside each other. However, these buildings and the neighborhood is still not protected. I think a lot of people are surprised that it's actually not part of the Greenwich Village Historic District. A lot of people kind of consider these streets to be such a key part of the village that most people just automatically assume that it's part of the protected area of the village and it's not. There have already been some landmarks that have been renovated or demolished in order to bring new residential centers. The Circle in the Square Theater on Bleecker Street uh, basically became the base for residential building. So, although there's not huge wholesale demolition, there is a sort of ebbing away of the historical fabric. Which the residents of Greenwich Village have submitted a proposal to Community Board 2. It took roughly three years for the meatpacking district's approval, and they expect it to go just as fast for the South Village. There's an old saying that everything changes in a New York minute. But maybe a famous village resident can say it better. The times, they are changing. I'm Andrew Buck, reporting for NYU.